Morning tubers. After I turned the camera off last night, I uh, decided to have a play with this 2400 again. This is the 2400. This was the one that uh, wasn't recognising the hard drive was present. Uh, well, I've got it working. The uh, 4600 I've got also did the same thing, but the, for different reasons. So, go ahead and uh, turn it on. <coughs> and I'll, because uh, it's easier to show. Break it that in time. No, I didn't. Yes, I did. What the problem was is, uh, we go into drive configuration. The hard drive was actually turned off, which is why it wasn't um, registering it. So all I had to do was turn the hard drive back on. Yes, I know the flop drive isn't installed. What I want to do is turn it off. That's it, it's there. See, you get ticks, you can turn them on or off. And that's what had happened. Someone had come into the BIOS and uh, deactivated the hard drive for some reason. That was as simple as that. So. Hopefully, now I'll just deactivate the floppy drive, it's not going to come up and tell me diskette, diskette zero seek failure. Because it's only saying that because uh, I've got no floppy disk drive installed. Yep. I don't know if I trust this hard drive the way that slowed down. See, all working. Now, this 2400, I'll just turn it, has got a damaged case, as you can see, which isn't hugely important, but considering I've got a non-damaged 2400, 2400 case down there, that actually uh, came as an empty PC case, I thought, well, I might as well take all the guts out of that one and put it into that one. Minus the floppy drive. <laughs> That's got one. So, that is a job for later. But in the meantime, I need to go and have some breakfast, which is right there. Uh, oh, with the 4600, the problem with that was, while it wasn't registering, the, uh, actually I don't think that was registering any IDE channel, well, that's because the date and time in the BIOS was uh, not set properly. As soon as I'd gone in and set that all up properly, that worked fine. Um, even though the 2400, the 1100 and the 4600 cases all look the same, um, the difference as I've found out, is in the motherboard and processor. A 40, this has got two RAM slots, whereas the 4600 has four. I tried to push it and put a gigabyte of RAM in it, and I didn't like it, so... It's got 512 megs in it as well. I think I took the disc out. Yeah. I have a habit of leaving the installation discs in the drives and... Uh, then I can't find them. So, once I've had breakfast, I'm going to come through here and dismantle this, and then turn the camera on, and you, you can uh, watch me reassemble it all into that case. Besides, the other problem I've got with this one, the um, side cover doesn't want to go back on this one for some reason, so I'm just going to 
take it apart and scrap the case. There is one difference though, even though these are both 2400 cases, that's got a straight edge down that side, that one hasn't. So I'm guessing one is uh, slightly newer than the other. I have to clean that grease ring off there, that's what stood my grease gun when it, on it when it was in the shed. So, despite that slight case design, they're both 2400 cases. I think you'll find that the cases are exactly the same. But like I said, the uh, motherboards differ slightly because on the 1100 and the 4600, the uh, PS2 ports for the keyboard and mouse are actually down here. I don't think they've got a serial port either, I'll have to double check that. <coughs> uh, and I noticed as well on the other 4600 and 1100 that the uh, IDE headers are in different places. There's a few subtle differences. But, uh, aside from that, I think the machines are more or less identical. Especially case-wise. They all mount the hard drive like that, they all mount the floppy drive there, they all mount the, you know, they've all got the same heat sinks and coolers for the processor. Which is actually running pretty cool, that heat sink is stone cold. Mind you, I did uh, go through this one, the 4600 and the 1100, and uh, put fresh thermal paste on the processors because uh, that tends to dry out over time and there weren't a lot left on a lot of them so I thought while I was at it I might as well uh, put fresh paste on them <coughs> so I'm going to turn this camera off and the rebuild of this one I'll uh, tack on the end of this video so uh, the next time you'll see me I'll have a pile of bits on this worktop so uh, I'll talk to you after I've had breakfast well I'm back I've had breakfast uh, I've got the camera sitting up on an old computer case so you can get a good bird's eye view Ready to get the fluff out of the way. To 
to uh, remove the motherboard. There is on this motherboard, there's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. You've got a couple of extra ones up this side. Not all motherboards will have them up that side. Let's take a look at the motherboard screws. You do the motherboard first, you won't risk knocking it with the power pack or anything else that you're going to have to take out. So that's why I'm going for the motherboard first.
move our supply, which is a case of undoing the four spurs on the back of the case that hold it in. Need the IO shield from the back here. I'm pretty certain as they're the same type of PCs with the one on the floor, it's a match anyway. So, take it from the supply. Ah, may need those. I just realised there's um, some standoffs with um, heat sink bracket screwed into the case. So, I'm going to go ahead and take those off. Uh, just got to go and get the pliers. Move my back with the pliers. Sorry, just need that. Am I loose now? I'm not sure if the other case has got them in, so I'm going to take them out just in case. And, uh, when I've done this, I'm going to take a short break. I do need to run this record of major. But take these standoffs. Transfer call of nature, so there we go. Last one. Well, there is one more in there, but I don't think I'll be needing that one. I'll what the heck take it out anyway. Better to take it out than having to take it out later if I do need it. No. CD-ROM drive. As far as I can tell, it's just that one screw. Still locked in. the old case. Oops. Sorry for that time. Ooh. 
I told you it's a good idea to keep hold of them. I'm not going to put that in yet, though. Because I'm going to have ca more cables flapping around, getting in the way. Right. So. I'll give that a dust while I've got it out. Make sure there's no fluff on it. Then we can lay our motherboard in. Should line up with the I.O. plate nicely. Yep. Tuck that cable up there. Now, I think what I'll do, I'll screw the motherboard in first. Then, I'll do the uh, heatsink bracket. So make sure all your screws are lined up. And just go through, refitting all the screws here to the Once you get the first couple in, the motherboard should be perfectly lined up with all the others. Is. This is why it's a good idea to have a magnetic screwdriver. See? That way, you never got to try to get in here with your fingers to try and put the bloody screws in. I've been there, done that one, and it's a pain in the ass. Took a while for that screw to bite in at the thread for some reason. I don't think I had it lined up quite right. So we've got three across the top here, and I've already done them two, so after I've done these top ones, I'll have three left. As you can see, I left the memory on the board because that was fine sitting in there. You may want to take it out just in case if you want to. Obviously, it's not overly important. If as long as you don't knock it, that'll be fine in the boom slots. Um, you may have noticed in the first part of this video that uh, when I uh, showed you what the problem was, why well, I wouldn't recognise the hard drive, when I did boot it up, it had a sound. That's because I went through and installed the drivers on it and the 1100 and the 4600 last night. Uh, all I did was Google the Google Dell Dimension 2400 or 1100, whichever one I was working on at the time, and uh, it came up with support direct from the Dell website. which um, still has all the drivers for these old machines. So if you ever want to, want to uh, refurbish these old machines like I have, you don't want to worry about finding drivers. Obviously I've kept them and saved them. And I've been a complete plonk. I didn't notice that uh, one of the cables is trapped underneath the motherboard. That's my fault, I just didn't notice, so that's no big, I'll just undo the, the screws enough to release the motherboard. Hopefully enough so I can mm. cut down the cable. I have to release another couple. Uh, all I had to download was the network driver, the video driver, and the audio driver for the integrated um, hardware. Because obviously, this isn't running any of the uh, PCI upgrade cards. Which, judging as I had those in the list as well, I'm guessing that was optional extras. Right. I'm not really sure what this 
Yeah, dude, that's the audio cable. So we plug in the audio cable. That's for the front USBs. Might as well plug the 12 volt cable in now because the fan sits over that. It'll be hard to feed the cable down there out of the way while that's uh, sitting there. Alright, let's see if I can just budge this process off. Right right. Now, what I'm going to do, just to make, I don't think I'd have to, but I will just to on the safe side. Clean the top of the processor down. Reinsert it. Sometimes the heat sinks will stick to the processors like that and pull them out of the socket, even with them locked into place. You could use um, like an alcoholic cleaning agent or something to properly clean these down, but I haven't got any. Nice little rub, just to clean the surface. You get a bit of your thermal paste right on the top. Just a blob right in the middle. I don't know how well what I'll do, I'm just going to move you for a minute so you can see. And then what I do with my finger, you want a nice even layer of it all over the top. And the smoother it is, the better your cooler cooling will be. So you get that nicely like that. Then you get should have put the cradle in first, but never mind, that doesn't matter. one end under one hook and then on this one just push it down. Simple as that. I will say that to these old Dell machines, they might be big and heavy but that makes the case quite tough and these are actually quite easy to work on. And a lot of the modern ones though you do need Dell specific parts to do any upgrades. Never mind. They are still good machines, in my opinion. So I've got that far, I think. I'll whack the front switch and any D's on next. Uh, I'll make sure I get it up the right way. And that just gets in like that. Plugs into there's a blue plug and there's only a blue header on here, so just match it up like that. And the USB head has got a black plug and a black header, so you can't mistake them. You just match the colours up. So uh, Dell really did make it easy to uh, assemble a PC like this. Now, next job. 
put this on next, which shouldn't be too hard. Got four catches on the fan. And I've got to line up. They've got to line up with four notches on the frame here.
you'd never know, and that was um, all transferred into a new case, would you? Let's turn her on. Oh, no, forgot. Turn it on at the wall first. Come on, then. let's try that again. boot up and uh, we'll try again. I'll shut it down properly and we'll boot it up again and see what happens. Uh, what did I just do with it? The little header plastic surround had broken off the board and I pulled the fan cable off. But it's left all the contacts there, so I've just slid the fan connector straight on at the contacts and it it's working the fan. And stop beeping at me. Let's uh should we do an actual restart? No, actually we'll do a turn off and we'll turn on and see what happens. on the bloody keyboard, that's why it was coming up as keyboard fighting. That must have been heavy enough to push the keys down. Yeah. Problem solved. <laughs> or mystery solved. So I'll go ahead. And, uh, side cover off. time on the camera because every time it gets to 34 minutes it stops the video and starts a new one. Well, there we have it. Should we try it once more just to make sure that 
weight on the keyboard was what was making the computer throw a fit at me. Um, oh, pardon me. Thermal paste on the keyboard. Last time to power it on. There we go. That was the problem. I don't actually think the hard drive is going to last long on this one from the sound of it. The scary thing is, this boots up faster than my uh, Windows 7 PC. Well, there we have it. Pretty operational. We've seen uh, how I assemble a computer anyway. Uh, as long as you take the proper precautions, there is real. Well, I don't suppose there's any right method or wrong method, so long as you do take the necessary steps to prevent against static, mostly. But uh, I did show you an easy way to do it. Well, for these old cases, anyway. So, uh, I think that's about it. Yeah, this case isn't in the cleanest condition, but it's not damaged like the other one, which can uh, go out onto the scrap trailer later, along with that lot down there. I'm not sure what I'm going to do with this 1100 yet, because I've already got one, so I'll probably take that apart for parts. I know that one works. There's the other 1100 and 4600. Let's park my ass on the bed. Uh, I um, re redid the thermal paste on these two last night. 4600, which is the one with the pass sticker on the top. That, as I said, had a similar problem to the one through there where it wouldn't recognise the IDE drives. Either of them. Well, that was just down to the time and date in the um, system clock that was wrong, so... If you ever find you have a similar problem with your computer, check that. And check to make sure that the uh, hard drive isn't deactivated like it was on the 2400 which makes me wonder why the computer shop didn't rectify that because it only taken them less than five minutes to check the BIOS which I would have thought a professional computer shop would have thought of I don't know maybe the owner just didn't want it anymore and just traded it in I don't know I don't know what I'm going to do for the rest of the day now. I may try to find the drivers for the Windows 98 machine up there. See if I can get anything to uh, work on it. I don't know though, because it's not a mainstream computer, is it? It's an e-machines. They weren't as big as Dell. I don't even know if e-machines still exist. So, I'm going to end the video here before it ends it itself. If you liked the video, please hit the like button. If you disliked it, please hit the dislike button. I'm not fussed either way. It's your opinion after all, and you're entitled to it. Uh, any comments and questions, etc., in the comments section below. And uh, thank you for watching, and I'll talk to you again soon. Bye.